From Warsaw, Poland, at the United Nations Climate Change Summit, this is Democracy Now! We are here to ask the negotiators to be courageous, to be ambitious, to go very quickly, very, very good, ambitious agreement to save the planet, to save humanity. Thousands rally in Warsaw at the March for Climate and Social Justice as the UN Climate Change Conference enters its second week. We'll go to the streets of Warsaw, then speak to the national coordinator of the Philippine Movement for Climate Justice. We'll also look at why the Polish government is teaming up with the coal industry for a parallel pro-coal summit. While millions of people are suffering from the impacts of a typhoon in the Philippines, the Polish government has invited to a coal summit uh, in parallel to this conference here. This is an outrageous signal uh, to um, listen to the lobby interests of the dirty industry, which is responsible for global warming, rather uh, to act in behalf of people around the world. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. At least six people are dead and dozens more wounded after a series of storms in the Midwest. Dozens of tornadoes were reported, most in Illinois. The storms left widespread damage, leveling homes and buildings while knocking out power to tens of thousands of people. Large parts of the town of Washington, Illinois, were destroyed. Rescue operations have been underway, seeking people trapped in their homes. Meanwhile, relief efforts continue in the Philippines 10 days after Typhoon Haiyan. The United Nations says some 4 million people have been displaced, up from 900,000 last week. The toll of the dead or missing stands at around 5,000. In the devastated city of Tacloban, homeless residents continue to gather at the city's airport in the hopes of being able to flee. There is no uh, food, us, yes, and we could have a, uh, we, we could be sick here because of the air, because of the dead. We've been here uh, yesterday since the, in the early morning. We have nothing to eat and we're struggling and we don't have any energy. Some 56,000 people are said to face unsanitary conditions in Tacloban. Fears, meanwhile, are growing for residents of remote islands that have yet to be reached since the typhoon hit. A series of bombings in Iraq has left at least 44 people dead and more than 100 wounded. More than 22 were killed in the capital, Baghdad. In Japan, a dangerous operation is underway at the earthquake-stricken Fukushima nuclear plant. Engineers are removing over 1,500 radioactive fuel rods from a storage pool as part of the plant's decommissioning. The rods could release toxic gases if they break or expose to air. Some of the tasks underway as part of Fukushima's decommissioning have never been attempted anywhere else. Former Chilean President Michel Bachelet is poised to return to office after winning the first round of presidential elections. Bachelet took close to 47 percent in Sunday's vote, more than 20 points ahead of her closest rival, but just short of the 50 percent needed to avoid a runoff. That vote will be held next month. Bachelet served from 2006 to 2010 as Chile's first female president. She's run on a platform of tackling income inequality and reforming a constitution institution dating back to the regime of General Augusto Pinochet, where she herself was a political prisoner. In the congressional vote, the Chilean activist Camila Viejo was elected to a seat in parliament. Viejo helped lead Chile's student uprising in 2011, which saw massive protests for affordable university education and deeper structural changes. Protests were held in over 260 cities worldwide Saturday to mark two months since the detention of the Greenpeace Arctic 30 for protesting gas drilling by Russia. The 28 activists and two journalists are facing charges of hooliganism, which carry up to seven years in prison. 
Saturday's rallies focused on urging Russia's state-controlled oil company Gazprom and its partner Shell to back calls for the Arctic 30s release. A mining accident in Colorado has left two workers dead and another 20 injured. The mine is near the southwestern town of Ure. The dead workers were apparently trapped underground after chemicals were accidentally released. In Washington, D.C., the House has approved a measure that would permit insurance companies to keep selling health plans that fail to meet the standards of the new health care law. In a challenge to President Obama, 39 Democrats joined with the Republican majority. President Obama granted a one-year reprieve to the substandard plans last week amidst anger over his failed pledge that all policyholders can keep their plans. But the House measure goes further in having no time cap and also allowing insurance companies to sell the plans to new customers. The White House has threatened a veto. Michigan prosecutors have filed charges against a Detroit area homeowner for the fatal shooting of an unarmed African-American woman on his porch. 19-year-old Renisha McBride was apparently seeking help after a car crash when she came to the door of the suspect, Ted Wafer. McBride was killed by a shotgun blast to the face. After a more than week-long investigation that saw the case attract national controversy, Prosecutor Kim Worthy unveiled charges on Friday. She was found with a very large gunshot wound to her face. It's alleged that she was shot to death by the homeowner after she knocked on his locked front screen door. By all reports, she was unarmed and there were no signs of forced entry to the home. We obviously do not feel that the evidence in this case feels that the defendant acted in lawful self-defense. Ted Wafer faces up to life in prison on charges of second-degree murder, manslaughter, and possession of a firearm and a felony. He's claimed the gun fired by accident and that he thought McBridge was an intruder. At a news conference, McBride's mother, Monica McBride, addressed Wafer publicly. I'm not going to call you a monster. You said it was an accident. When you accidentally do something to someone, you say you're sorry or you apologize. You did no accident. You took a life, and you took a beautiful life that was starting to blossom into a beautiful woman. The computer hacker Jeremy Hammond has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for hacking into the computers of the private intelligence firm Stratfor. Hammond's admitted to being a member of the group Anonymous and to stealing files from Stratfor as well as other government and corporate sites. Some 5 million Stratfor emails ended up on the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks, showing how the firm monitors activists and spies for corporate clients. Hammond pleaded guilty earlier this year, in part to avoid a long longer sentence of at least 30 years in prison. He's already spent 18 months behind bars, some of it in solitary confinement. On Friday, Hammond attorney Sarah Kunstler said Hammond's sentencing judge had overlooked his political motivations. The words that the, that the judge used a, a lot and that the government used a lot in their sentencing submission were maximum mayhem. And the, the government and the judge felt that the idea of causing mayhem or causing destruction was incompatible with Jeremy's stated political goals. And, um, and the, we disagree with that. You know, um, advocating for political change, struggling for political change, um, involves being um, disruptive at times. It involves being destructive at times. These are some ways, sometimes the only pathways to change. Jeremy Hammond's 10-year sentence is one of the longest ever in a criminal hacking case. During his sentencing, Hammond said an FBI informant had directed him to hack into the websites of several foreign governments, including Brazil, Iran, and Turkey. According to Hammond, the FBI used him and other hackers to disrupt vulnerabilities in the home pages of foreign states. And the Nobel Prize winning author Doris Lessing has died at the age of 94. Lessing wrote over 55 works of fiction, poetry, and operas. Her 1962 book, The Golden Notebook, is widely considered to be the first feminist novel. She died three weeks after her son, who she had taken care of for years, died as well. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.